your divine protection. I believe in Christianity as I believe that this sign has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. When I was playing basketball in college, we had the opportunity to take a trip to Europe to play some international team. Our travels took us to Amsterdam. I was completely ignorant to the reputation of the city and apparently my coach was too big too because he gave us a night off to enjoy the city. Walking the dark streets with some of my teammates, we happened across the red light district, a clean, legal, organized, and repulsive ven- venue for uh, soliciting prostitutes. I glanced into a large window pane and was mortified to see an almost naked young woman and take a see a meat water. I, it was a recipe of a disaster, but in that moment, something inside took control. My eyes reflexively glanced down at the uh, cobblestone street and stayed there. I had memorized one car, uh, Coritan's pen part 13 as a child and the Holy Spirit instantly brought that verse to mind. No temptation has overtaken you speak except what is common to man and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear but when you are tempted he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. For the benefit of my equally, equally terrified and tantalized uh, teammate, I started to quote the verse, eyes down boys. I shouted, God will provide a way out. I looked up and saw a road leading to a quiet resident street. Recognizing it as our way out, we sprinted for safety. We are constantly bombarded with temptation in this uh, world, but God uh, says that He will give us a way out when we need it. And because he is in us, he will walk us through it. Dear Father, thank you for your divine protection and the support that upholds us from the inside us out. Give me the discernment to see temptation for what it is. Give me the wisdom and humility to allow you to move in me so that I will take the way of escape you have provided. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is working through you. Absence sharpens love. Presence strengthens it. Have you ever wondered why we don't see God's active handiwork and presence like we do in the Old Testament. God revealed himself in some pretty radical ways back in the good days. Disembodied hand, hands writing on walls, pillars of fire leading the crowds even having dinner with God on Mount Sinai with Moses and the 70 elders of Israel no joke check out Exodus chapter 24 part 9 to 11 with such radical signs of God's hand in the world in scripture 
it's easy to look around and wonder if he even works like that anymore. I am convinced that he has never stopped working supernaturally across the globe, but I am not just astounded by what he is doing out there. I am astounded by the something even more incredible. God is able to work in us. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generation forever and ever. Amen. This is definitely one of the great mysteries of the faith and yet one of the most practical and profound. God works through those of us who work Him and trust Him to bring honor and glory to Himself. How does He be? How does He do that? That in all believers, all of the time, I have no idea. But I am sure glad that He does. Without God living through us, it wouldn't just. It wouldn't just be difficult to live the Christian life. It would be impossible. Holy Spirit, thank you for your enabling power that is at work within me. As I go about my day, use me to do your amazing works in the in the world. I believe you are able to do more than I can ask or imagine. Live through me to bring glory to you in Christ today, in any way you choose. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Extreme makeover. You edition. The atheist finds himself enslaved by the need to prove himself an unbeliever. In denying the existence of God, he finds nothing greater than himself and others uh, selves in the universe. His greatest creed centers in I believe in myself. One of my good friends has a son named Ben. When Ben was little, he wasn't so different from your average five years old. His room was messy. He never ate his vegetables and he painted the walls instead of paper. But never had his dad seen someone so young care so much about his appearance. He used to stand and yell for mom and dad to rush into the room. The emergency sleeves touching the, re, uh, the wrist or shoelaces with uneven loops. It was an early sign of a future larger struggle he would deal with struggle that we all wrestle with obsession with outward appearances focus on earthly belongings satisfaction from impressing others through looks and actions that's the bad news the good news is that God is able to transform us. God is the business of remodeling. He is able to transform our spirits and our minds and one day he will even transform our bodies. Sometimes the remodeling is painful and ugly. He comes 
in and tears out the walls, the furnishing and the old appliances that he knows must go if we are to reflect Jesus Christ outward through authentic lives. And one day he will even take our decaying, decaying bodies and transform them into something glorious, reflecting his glory. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Almighty God, please break my obsession with earthly appearance and possession. Get rid of the things that keep me in the worldly bondage so I can be free in Christ to be all that you made me to be now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What can wash away your sin? When, I, when it snows, you have two choices. Shovel or make snow angels. When Christ comes into our lives, he usually comes giving us a heightened awareness of sin. This can weigh heavy on our minds, but thankfully the purpose of this awareness is to teach us one of the great realities of Christian spirituality. We are unable to purify ourselves from the stain of our sin, and only He can heal us of the shame and of sins against us. Sin is the give and take ordeal. We do it, and it is often done to us. Even if it wasn't your fault, the sins done to you can leave you under a heavy weight of shame and guilt. You wish you can, you could wash yourself from both the outside and inside, but you can. You are not able to. God Almighty, however, can. He is able to purify us both from the sins we have committed and the shame left by sins that have been committed against us. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and a present to present you before his glorious uh, presence without fault and with joy a uh, great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be for all ages, now and for evermore. Amen. God is all powerful. We might try to describe that uh, that with all sorts of theor uh, theor logical sounding words or wish earthly analogies but the fact is this he is able to do far above and beyond anything that we can imagine to think he can even joyfully present us blameless before himself because of who he has made us to be in Christ he truly is too incredible to fully understand what can we do but kneel with our hearts and hands raised toward heaven in worship and thanks. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, today I thank you for the amazing grace you have poured out on me. Thank you for cleansing me in my sin. 
thank you for healing me from the sins committed against me. You and you alone are worthy to glory, majesty, authority, and worship. I give that to you now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Reality check up for you. Our bodies are apt to be our autobiographies, the human body. This topic is of immense concern in our culture. Look at the diet ads on television of the New Year's Day. The plastic surgeon's advertisement in the yellow pages, the latest inform informal touting a machine that can make you look like a Greek god is less than two minutes a day. Consider our body language. Our conversations almost invariably end up focusing on our bodies and the dread dead F word fat. We are always talking about our bodies, but enough about what we, the books and tabloids say, say about this. What does God say about the body? I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Your body is wonderful. Do you believe that? Could you praise God for your body? Do you? That's not a simple question, is it? Many of us praise God in spite of how our bodies seem to be made. Some of us can't think of any reason to thank Him at all. As our bodies interact with the world, they often expenses, experience pain, disease, injury, and eventually death. Sure, our bodies might be wonderful, but not always in the good sense of the word. Is it possible that we have been made in a way that is full of wonder? in the sense that we might have more questions that, than answers. God wants you to praise Him for the way He has made you and to thank Him by faith for your body. That might seem like a real stretch right now, but if that is what He wants for us, he stands ready to make it happen through us. Dear Lord, thank you for your many blessings and the shaping me to reflect your perfect image. Help me to see my body as you see it. Please expose the lies that I have believed about how I am made. Open my eyes and mind so I can see the full wonder of the body you have given me. Hallelujah. Amen. You are his masterpiece. The human body is a machine which wins its own springs. Modern technology has uncovered a phenomenal biological world inside the human body. Its complexity far exceeds anything that anyone will imagine and in many ways we haven't even begun to explore it. Dr. Lang, a friend of mine who was once head of cardiology at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, showed me just how incredible the human body is with these statistics. There are 
74 trillion cells in the human body, the white blood cells in the lymph issue can form 10,000 to 100,000 different antibodies. They fight against foreign issue and can make these antibodies at a rate of 2,000 per second. A single white blood cell can kill as many as a hundred bacteria. Over the course of a lifetime, the heart the heart will pump an average of 52,560,000,000 uh, gallons of blood. That's enough to fill a New York skyscraper. It, I could go on, but you get the point. Your body is incredible. Then God said, let us make mankind in our marriage, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. When God sculpt, uh, sculpted humanity in his image, an amazing amount of detail went into the works, resulting in an amazing, intricate masterpiece. He created life, life the way he did to glorify himself, but he took another step further with humanity in his love. He's designed us to represent himself. But best of all, God designed us to be inhabited by his spirit, a personal relationship shared by no other living thing in existence. All of these things work together to create a complex, beautiful creation that cannot be replicated. Father, I rejoice that you shaped me and you designed me to be in a relationship with you. Help me to remember how special I am that because you made me. I am special, unique and beautiful in your eyes. Amen. Your essential, essential earth suite. Take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. These days, in Christian culture, we are often taught to look away from our earthly slaves and focus on God. This appears most often in response to problems like physical temptations, obsession with personal image or substance addic uh, addiction. While it is certainly important that we do not become our own idols and serve our own fleeting wants, let's not forget our bodies are fairly important for the act of living on earth Sac uh, sarcasm international intentional let's be realistic you can't live here without it counselor bill uh, gilham calls the human body an earth suite just as a space suite keeps an astronaut alive the body is essential for your earthly existence your body is in this uh, pensable. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says human beings are made by, of, of a spirit, soul, and body. In God's creation, we are confined uh, to a limited existence so we can reach others and tend to the creation he entrusted to us. 
while it is really important to pay attention to the growth of your spirit and soul the body is what sustains those things on this earth we must treat it with healthy respect each part of us sustains the other so being negligent to one part is just as bad as paying too much attention to it paul told us to take care of uh, our whole slaves and that includes our body father god i need you to balance my life the way you mean it to be i can't do that on my own i want to care uh, care for this earth sweet but i don't want to do that in my own wisdom or strength i surrender them all to you i submit to your spirit in me in every area show me how to care for them all keeping my attentions in check when they become pointed or selfish amen hallelujah amen